Uh, welcome back. This is Y254, and we, we call this the Health Wednesday. So if you're just joining us, our discussion today is on uh, a fight against suicide. Remember, you can send your insights and comments through our Twitter handle, that is at Ngena underscore Lizzy, and at Y254 channel, and be part of this discussion. So as I told you earlier, I have a guest with me, and her name is Emma Karetu, who is a counseling psychologist. So Emma, welcome. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes. So let me just go straight and ask my first question. Mm -hmm. What leads people to commit suicide? What really triggers them to end their lives? OK, there are quite a number of uh, issues yes. that can make someone to go that direction. First, we have mental health. Yeah. Mental health, uh, we have several, but I'll m just mention a few that mm -hmm. are very common. Like bipolar is a mental illness. Okay. Where somebody has high moments, mm -hmm. and uh, when they're feeling high, they think they they, are, they can be a president. They think so highly of them. Yeah. They're very high. Okay. But when the the flip side of that is when they have a depressed mood. Yeah. So when they get a depressed mood, they can end up committing suicide. Mm -hmm. The other one is uh, stress. There's a lot of stress in society right now. Yes. There is that's so much true. stress that if not handled well. It, end, it ends up to depression. Yes. And once stress moves to severe depression, mm -hmm. somebody becomes suicidal. Yeah. So some people who commit suicide, it's not that it's their wish. It becomes a disease at some level. Okay. That is why they find themselves committing suicide. Oh, so where they, so there's a level where this bipolar, this stress, this depression yes. becomes now, it's not just that, it's, it goes to being a disease and yeah, Something stress. Else. Yeah. Okay, okay, bipolar is a mental illness. Yeah. We have schizophrenia, which is also a mental a mental illness, where somebody gets hallucinations, mm -hmm. delusions, so their brain chemicals are not balanced. Yeah. But when it comes to depression, which is also another mental illness, this one starts slowly. Mm -hmm. It starts with stress. Maybe somebody has issues in their marriage. Yeah. Maybe for young people, they have issues with school fees. Yeah. They, they are coming from dysfunctional families. There's a lot of peer pressure mm -hmm. in in, in, in what you want to achieve in life there's also the element of drug and substance abuse mm -hmm. so if these ones are not managed yeah. when it's still very very we call it, we have mild moderate and severe yeah when it is at mild mm -hmm. or moderate we can help through counseling but now when it gets to the next level which is severe depression it now becomes a disease and becomes a mental illness okay yeah so by the time they are committing suicide yeah their level of um, cognitive reasoning yeah thinking yeah. it just directs them uh -huh. to committing suicide so, so well uh -huh. yeah so, so when someone gets to that point and they can commit suicide uh -huh. are there warning signs that people can see and tell am I, yeah are there those uh, things that we can tell that this one is about to do it Ama, this one is not at a good place yes okay if you know your family members i'm now in a family setup if you know your siblings very well yeah and you know for example Elizabeth is a very outgoing girl. She likes hanging out. Yes. There are those symptoms that you will see and you can you can easily pick mm -hmm. because some of the symptoms include isolation. Mm -hmm. Somebody just starts isolating themselves. They lose interest in activities they used to like enjoying. Mm -hmm. Like, you, let's go out. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want to go. They lock themselves in their rooms. Some of them lose appetite. So uh, in, you, in its initial stages, it's uh, more or less like depression as in yes. when it's uh, when it's starting yeah you just see when the moods have changed mm -hmm. there's a lot of hopelessness some sleep patterns some people sleep too much or yeah. others don't sleep at all yeah. you can notice weight loss yes so if you see these symptoms in a span of two weeks mm -hmm. i mean after two weeks yeah. that's a red flag mm -hmm. so it's our responsibility to be checking is there something wrong with emma is there something wrong so it's something that you, those symptoms you can pick but unfortunately, we are living in a very busy life, yeah, such that it is not easy for people to pick. When somebody has actually actualized, is when somebody say, actually had seen, yeah. they started changing. But because of our busyness, we, we rarely pick it up. But mm -hmm. yes, those symptoms are there, you can easily pick. Yeah. And hopelessness. And somebody will start even talking about, oh, I'm thinking of taking away my life. There's nothing that is making sense anymore. Uh -huh. So when somebody starts talking like that, it's our responsibility to pick it up and say, hey, this is a red flag. Yeah, and exactly. Now on that point, mm -hmm. hi. with my friends back, uh, maybe with my friends as we interact and maybe someone comes and tells me, you know mm -hmm. what? 
mm -hmm. I want to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. So what should I tell them? What do I do? Number one, uh -huh. you start and uh, probe. Oh, and just a minute, just mm -hmm. before you you uh, you go further into it. Mm -hmm. So, what do I tell them, and how do I know if this if this person is just seeking for pity mm -hmm. or sympathy, mm -hmm. or oh, what is the, the, this 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 there's a way someone can come and tell me I want to commit suicide mm -hmm. just in a way to seek sympathy, mm -hmm. not like this. How do I know the difference between someone who is serious mm -hmm. and one who's just joking, and mm -hmm. how do I deal with it? By listening. Okay. Listening is a very critical element, yeah, because when you listen mm -hmm. to what is going on, yeah. like maybe looking at your age, I think maybe you could be in the era of dating, <laughs> you can listen to Saturday. that person. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you, you, you can pick. And you see, I always tell people, something may look like very trivial to me, but to another person, it's it is very deal. critical. Yes. So it is always easier to, to like, uh, just uh, brush somebody off. Ah, you, you are joking. But then you need to to really take your time and listen to them. Mm -hmm. And even because there are somebody, there are people who are close to you, you'll have noticed. Yeah. You'll have noticed, or maybe, okay, maybe it's somebody you've not seen in a long time. And then they come and approach you and they say, by the way, Elizabeth, I think I'm done. Yeah. So number one, you listen to them. Just hear the story. Mm -hmm. Ask questions that are leading, yeah. open-ended questions. What is it about? When did you start feeling this way? And uh, when the moment they start talking, you can actually judge. Don't take anything for granted, because mm -hmm. maybe to you, a relationship you can brush it off, but for them, they they they're it's, very heartbroken, yeah. and it it they're taking, it's, it, very they're taking it very personally. Mm -hmm. So you start talking to them, and if you feel like you don't have the capacity to work with them, you you lead them to professionals. You have so many counselors. Mm -hmm. uh, they, there's a group I saw the other day called Befriend Befrienders Kenya. Yeah, they we check their website it, 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 when somebody is having uh, suicidal thoughts, dealing with grief, dealing with whatever issue, uh, drugs, mm -hmm. addictions. They they are able to work with you. Okay, they so can you pick it up very fast yeah. let the professionals know and even invo involve the family sometimes you take it for granted and then you realize what i have a friend who committed suicide she called me on a wednesday and then i told her have you seen a doctor mm -hmm. she said yeah i've gone to nairobi west hospital i've seen a psychiatrist i'm on medication so because i knew she was on medication i knew she was at a good place so i told her i'll see you on sunday yeah but unfortunately the medication she was given was not uh, the right medication so by the time so I was being called on Sunday. She was. She had actually hanged herself in oh, her house. That's, that's, so this, that's let's not take sad. anything for granted. Yeah. But it is our African culture, or rather, in society. Ah, you want to kill yourself? Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It's because Emma, of lack of awareness. There's also another group of people mm -hmm. where maybe there's someone um, I'm worried about. I have mm -hmm. a friend who you see. It's not everyone who is upfront who come and tell me this is what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. No, there's someone I'm worried about their mm -hmm. mental health. Mm -hmm. So are there questions that I can ask that, you know, can make them uh, uh, open up to me a bit, maybe? Mm -hmm. Or uh, are there questions I can ask in such a way that I can know the cause of their problem, I'm mm -hmm. even help when they're not ready to talk? Okay, it normally also goes with personality. Yeah. It also goes with the level of trust that that person you're calling your friend has mm -hmm. towards you. So as soon as, soon as you've noticed there are some changes yeah in their the way they are behaving yeah. the way they are their doing concerns, stuff yeah, yeah and and in counseling there are people who block yeah in as much as you're trying to reach out to them they block mm -hmm. but when you approach somebody with care and with concern that you're really concerned about them and you're genuine because mm -hmm. there are those qualities of that you require as a friend to be able to work with them so somebody can easily tell whether you're genuine mm -hmm. whether you're approachable whether you and even your body language mm -hmm. so there are so many factors yeah first your body language mm -hmm maintain eye contact yeah. most of us by the time we we are, uh, by the time somebody is asking us a question yeah. we are very quick we already have the answer uh -huh. we, but we've we, not we, even processed yeah we list uh, we we yes. listen to answer uh, yes. to respond In, not yes. to understand yes we yeah, don't true. process so there are those questions you can ask us so oh, how have you been you have to break the ice yeah so how have you been it's been a while i've not been seeing you whatever you, you hung out mm -hmm. or you know or or maybe you've heard something about them you just a wise way of doing it and mm -hmm. also looking at the words that you use because when you use words like you it's a condemning word mm -hmm. but, but when you say i feel like 
you you are going through something do you feel like you are you don't talk about it mm -hmm. well, and so, also on that mm -hmm. is it safe to ask them uh, can you hurt yourself like uh, um, are you uh, uh, are you planning to hurt yourself Ama? can you will you hurt yourself can you ask that question that's a direct question well maybe after <laughs> after you've gone after through you've the details, broken is it is it uh, convenient to ask the question because well it could be direct but sometimes i think it's important to just be upfront and you know ask to confront. what you're thinking yeah no okay what normally have it's usually about the, the, the person okay. not you because it could be you having your thoughts or rather put, pushing your percep perceptions on them. Mm -hmm. So you ask those questions that will help them mm -hmm. facilitate. Actually, it's so just facilitating. So yeah, them? so you're asking questions like, I, I feel like there's something going on in your life. And then they'll tell you, then mm -hmm. you say, do you want to talk about it? Okay. So it's you driving, you know, yeah. asking them questions <laughs> that will provoke them to speak about it. Okay. For how long has this been going on? But don't ever say like I feel. And I then you, because if they're already at that position of coming over uh, being suicidal, they will tell you. But they have been feeling so hopeless. So when somebody is talking of hopelessness, you can easily pick mm -hmm. hopelessness leads to. To yeah. suicidal thoughts yeah and they'll tell you mm -hmm. i've been having suicidal thoughts i've been thinking things are not going on on well in campus you're mm -hmm. having issues in our family yeah. so they'll open up yeah so uh apart from uh just telling them to go to a counselor and talking to them mm -hmm. is there any other way we can help these people and guide them are there other yes. things support system support system is very very critical mm -hmm. like na now in a family setup yeah i know of uh, young people who are going through so much but their parents are not aware yeah yeah or even in a church setup whatever religion i'm sure there are those support systems that are there support groups mm -hmm. like now like now i go to international christian center mm -hmm. and one of the things that you're trying to do as a church is to come up with a support systems for different issues like now loss and grief so many people are losing their loved ones through death people are losing their jobs, people are going through divorce, people are going through separation, children are going through drugs and uh, substance abuse. So, but when you come up with a support group, they realize, hey, I'm not the only one going through this. Mm -hmm. Even Elizabeth is yeah. we're on the same boat. Yeah. But when they think I'm the only one going through this, mm -hmm. they are more prone to suicidal yeah. thoughts, thoughts and, and attempt. Yeah. So those support groups are very, very critical. And also just being checking on each other like in a family setup, always check on because uh, I'm seeing a trend of you wake up so early mm -hmm. at five are you guys ready? are your books in the bags? In the uh, the, the, <laughs> yes, the, the yeah. bus is outside we're always on the move, yeah. always on the move but do you have, do you take time as a family and just sit down and check and don't ask about books. Mm -hmm. No, we are always asking our children, have you done your homework? You know, have you it, finished it your homework? When they hear about a family yes. meeting, yes. It's a, it's yeah. a, they think it's a chance to be yes. scolded. Yes. So we have to make it a lifestyle and very, very intentional. Yeah. That every day, God help me, I'll check with my daughter. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you can even tell, you know, you can tell somebody's... Uh, physical appearance yeah. like hey today mommy you look moody if it's a girl or hey what's up john you know you, when when you you are you are um, concerned yeah with what is going on in their life mm -hmm. you can actually prevent yeah because by the time they are getting to those last stages yeah of becoming suicidal it's it takes a while it's not something that happens overnight mm -hmm. it can take a year it can take two years some are depending also on their personality and what the issue is okay. some people are so their personality they're not able to handle they're delicate they're very very delicate yeah and yeah. what about uh, if you have a friend or a family member who has mm -hmm. uh, made their attempt on suicide mm -hmm. how do you deal with that how do you deal with that because i'm sure you're constantly afraid they might do it again they might repeat it yeah or it might maybe they might have encouraged someone else in the social yeah. setting or yeah. in the family mm -hmm. uh, how does how do you go about that they need to go through counseling number one because sometimes you want to help yes as family members yeah but it's the professional angle because there's a way a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist will bring it yeah across yeah mm -hmm. so number one is to ensure that they seek they seek help from a professional. Number two, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things now, that... Uh, uh, sorry, Emma, you've said about seeking help. Now, we're talking about just the victim. 
even yeah. because I, I imagine mm -hmm. the whole stigma comes with you know uh, assuming it's apparent wow yeah. my son uh, attempted suicide yeah. now in the village it's going to be that family of them yeah yeah so how what uh, so, so as you talk on that also touch on the stigma well uh, with the, the family fa and yeah. friends okay yeah so like now for the family they they are called like caregivers because they are the ones who will like uh, they are the ones the society is watching yeah this yeah. family has this issue so the best thing is just when there's also family therapy that now will bring the victim on board mm -hmm. plus the family members and in that setup they are taught how to cope the coping techniques yeah on mm -hmm. how to not allow because yeah. i always tell people mm -hmm. you are in charge of the internal the internal you're, you're in, in charge of your internal uh, issues yeah but anything external you are not and it you're not under control yeah people will always talk mm -hmm. whether you've done something good or mm -hmm. something bad people will always talk so when you're able to have that uh, defense mechanism yeah of i don't care what people say i know the truth and i know our son or our daughter has overcome mm -hmm. and you're going to work with them yeah. so it's more of uh, of uh, empowering them yeah to look at things positively because the mom even if you are not a victim mm -hmm. and you're having an issue in your life that thing of what people are thinking people are saying it can really bring you down mm -hmm. but once you have coping skills skin skills and say you know what i don't care what people say it's about me mm -hmm. but the moment you start looking at what are people saying what are people thinking you're prone to go down very very fast yeah so yeah there, there's family support mm -hmm. there's also support groups yeah that are there that can be that are there for for for, for caregivers when it because it, it can be very strenuous yeah taking care of a or having had a suicidal attempt in the family mm -hmm. and also to prevent it uh so most people commit suicide maybe using um uh, they are called what pesticides these poisoners rat and right those things yeah some people even the knives so you keep away even a gun yeah so you keep away things that can easily make them uh that are easily accessible for them mm -hmm. so if it is uh, maybe drugs you make sure that you don't have any and i'm telling this to both the family members and even there if you've attempted suicide before mm -hmm. and you know the method that you used you keep those things far away yeah, if it yeah. is a rope you know mm -hmm. yeah all so those. still on that i i've been i've been meaning to ask uh because uh, earlier um through this something i was watching and mm -hmm. someone was saying she was she had attempted suicide before mm -hmm. so she was saying mm -hmm. before you actually go to buying those medis uh, buying the the pills mm -hmm. or the medicine mm -hmm. before you go for the rope mm -hmm. before you go for the gun yeah this is something you have planned and you even have backup plans yes. you you have planned you have revisited if, even if it failed you know what you will do after mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. so my question is can uh, suicide be impulsive Okay, for suicide, as I said earlier on, it's by the time you're getting to su being suicidal, mm -hmm. it's it has taken time. So at no point can someone just come no, and say, no, I want to kill no, myself no, 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 and then just no, do it? No, okay. unless yeah. there are some very few cases, yeah, that the, the suicidal cases are gene genetic. Okay. So what you normally do, like now in therapy, we draw your genogram. In, in layman, it is a family tree. Mm -hmm. There are families that have a predisposition to, to suicide. So if you, if you draw a, a genogram up to, up to the third generation, you're able to tell uncle so-and-so committed suicide, auntie so-and-so committed suicide. So the, actually the message is awareness. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of your family tree? And it's not only suicide, even alcohol, there are families that are predispositioned to alcohol. Mm -hmm. So if you know you're coming from a family that is predispositioned to alcohol, atos your onje your pombe. Because automatically you become an, it's a an cool. addict. It's, it's going to so, be a big effect. Yeah. So when you're aware, mm -hmm. but, but the issue of now do actualizing, it takes time. Because mm -hmm. when up, those symptoms of depression, they're about nine. So suicidal thoughts is the last one, which is the ninth one. So by the time you're seeing somebody isolating themselves, losing their appetite, losing interest in activities, to enjoy doing mm -hmm. having a sense of hopelessness you know having a sense of um, they don't want to go out they don't, don't want to see the sun by the time you're picking those symptoms you're able to curb it you're able to stop it in yeah. good time mm -hmm. but by the time they're getting to symptom number nine of suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. having even planning to do it that is the, the the extreme part yeah so but when you pick it earlier mm -hmm. or even when they're already here now you start taking because by the time it's getting here it's your brain chemicals yeah. are not balanced 
So you're even doing it not at, that you want to do it, but you may feel mbali sana. That yeah. is why they are given mm -hmm. antidepressants to balance the brain, brain chemicals. And then now you're given, you're given uh, what do you call it? You go for therapy, you go for counseling, okay. because there's always an underlying factor. It, okay. it, it, you have to address the issue yeah. that is causing, directing you to committing suicide. Otherwise, if you don't direct it, you'll still come back. So, so if, if it's an issue with school fees, if it's an issue with the marital problem, you have to resolve it. And then now you, you start coming back to normal. Okay. Yes. Well, that's very knowledgeable. And yeah. now, let, as we conclude the discussion, mm -hmm. because time is not on our side, mm -hmm. uh, people keep posting, there are people who are keep posting suicide message, uh, messages on social media. Mm -hmm. Like you find someone has dropped a whole paragraph on how they want to end their life. Mm -hmm. So how do we as a society deal with that? And how do we help them? You see, even on social media, you'll find they, there's a very different crowd. Mm -hmm. Some are willing to tell you, just go ahead, do your yes. Uh, yes. kill yourself you yeah. see the you, you're you insignificant in the world furthermore mm. and what can we tell them um, are they encouraging things that you can tell them because I also understand mm. that also these social media pages they have helplines where yeah, yeah. you can you can just post so but for, uh, you can uh, you can post you can repost or uh, set, um, what is it Forward. report that yeah, yeah you can report them to yes. to those specific pages mm -hmm. so also are there things we can write uh, in the comment section are there things we can write to encourage them yeah yeah by the way you can write yeah yeah there's those yeah of course definitely oh, right. do you, do? Uh -huh. you can even tell them by the way your your life is so valuable you know encouraging them because at that point they're feeling so hopeless mm -hmm. they are feeling so worthless they are feeling like you know i don't belong so you can just encourage them by telling them that their lives are very valuable mm -hmm. whatever issue you're going through I'm sure it can be resolved. Then you can say side chat. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm sure by the time you are doing that, it is, of course, there are those people that you don't know, but you'd want to reach out mm -hmm. to. So you write to them the importance of their mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. You write to them that you can seek help, whatever it is, there's nothing that cannot be resolved. And then, of course, the consequences, uh, like, 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 for example, if it is a parent, if you, you want to commit suicide, your kids are being left behind. If it is a student, you know, the, the circle, yeah. the, the family set up or the circle that you're in. So you start by encouraging them. But the critical is for asking them to seek help. Because sometimes when you're telling them about the, the people the people they're leaving behind and all that, then they're already like, mm -hmm. they're sick. Yeah. And I want to tell people out there, please, please, depression is sickness. Because people tend to think, so what are you? Mm. But somebody is unwell and they need help so let us as a, as a society go out there go out of our way and help people that are, are um, in need of help refer them to professionals just to work with them mm -hmm. you know encourage them find out what they, some of the issues you know you can even do it as a as a peer yeah as a peer it doesn't have to go the professional way mm -hmm. it could even be something like maybe a, a broken relationship and that is a, one of the skills that we use we call it self-disclosure mm -hmm. you tell them even me i've gone through that then they realize oh come it's something i can deal with yeah because and they need support system they need somebody to talk to okay well yes. thank you so much emma for that discussion mm -hmm. i wish we had more time <laughs> trust me i have multiple questions yeah. Yes. I wanted to know and people back at home to know about depression. So thank you so much for staying with us throughout the discussion. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have to go. Time is not on our side. But in case you missed anything or you'd want to follow through the, dis the whole discussion again, you can follow this discussion on our YouTube page that is on Y254 channel. There you'll find uh, this and much, much more. So that's that's it for uh, from us. And uh, you can keep it Y254 for more amazing programs and youthful vibes. Until next Wednesday, bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Good discussion.